Welcome to another edition of my Collegiate Gothic Tour. By now, you know the history and features of Collegiate Gothic. If you're interested in a review of Collegiate Gothic and seeing other campuses, I've provided a link in the notes. We're going to explore the features of Collegiate Gothic across four campuses in this video. We'll be looking at several, if not all, of the features of Collegiate Gothic at Oglethorpe University, Berry College, Swanee, the University of the South, and the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Let's begin with the stone exterior buildings, a prominent and important feature of Collegiate Gothic. At Oglethorpe University, most of the building's exteriors are granite. According to author William Morgan in his book, Academia, the buildings on this campus pay homage to Corpus Christi College in Oxford, England, which is the alma mater of James Oglethorpe, the college's namesake and the founder of the Georgia colony. Even though the buildings aren't an exact copy of the buildings on the Corpus Christi College campus, Lupton Hall is modeled very closely after Corpus Christi's main entrance. The stone exteriors of the buildings of Oglethorpe's campus are made of blue granite, quarried from Elberton in nearby Elbert County in the Piedmont region of Georgia. We see the granite on the exteriors of Hermance Stadium, Hearst Hall, Lupton Hall, and J. Mac Robinson Hall. Like Oglethorpe, the exteriors of the buildings of the Ford Complex at Berry College are constructed of brown granite quarried locally from the North Georgia Piedmont. We see the stonework on the exteriors of Clara Hall, Mary Hall, Ford Hall, and other buildings around the Ford campus complex, which was created by the financial contributions from the automotive industrialist Henry Ford and his wife Clara. The exteriors of the buildings on Swanee's campus are built entirely using locally quarried sandstone. Unlike the crafted stonework on the exterior buildings of Swanee, the University of the South, Berry College, and Oglethorpe University, the exteriors of the buildings at the University of Tennessee Chattanooga's campus are built in red brick. We see the red brick exterior on most all of the buildings around campus. Chosen most likely because of its relative inexpensive costs, the exteriors still represent the intricate craftsmanship and skilled workmanship associated with collegiate Gothic architecture. The arch, another very prominent feature of collegiate Gothic architecture that was featured on all of the campuses that were visited. The arch is a ubiquitous feature on any campus designed using the Collegiate Gothic architecture style. We see examples of Gothic arches, round arches, straight arches, and elliptical arches featured across all four campuses. The quad or quadrangle layout as a feature of Collegiate Gothic architecture exist on each of the four campuses that were visited. However, the manner in that each campus is cloistered or secluded differs slightly. Oglethorpe University's campus has its main academic quad, which is bordered by Hearst Hall, Lupton Hall, and Lowry Hall. The quad functions as a grassy, quiet space for student activities as well as serving as a border between the campus and the city of Atlanta. 
The campus of the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga is designed around multiple quads or open spaces. Each one of the quads is framed by different buildings on campus. The first most notable quad is the one formed by the library, race hall, Hooper Hall, and Dietrich Hall. This is called the Chamberlain Pavilion. This quad is a space that was once the university's football stadium. Others include spaces between residence halls, and even this one that includes space between apartments. Barry College's wide open, expansive rural campus really doesn't need to be cloistered using the quadrangle layout. However, the buildings on the Ford complex create three very beautiful and pastoral open spaces with greenery and even small ponds. Like Barry's campus, the University of the South, or Swanee, is also located in a very wooded area. This area really needs no quads to make open separate spaces, but the quads at Swanee really serve to anchor the buildings in the woods of a campus that's truly nestled in the forest. Battlemented towers and battlement style roof lines were on all four college campuses, giving all the buildings that castle-like feel that we expect to see from collegiate Gothic architecture. Bay windows are yet another feature of Collegiate Gothic present on all of the buildings at each of the four campuses visited. These bay windows on the campus of University of Tennessee Chattanooga's Hunter Hall and Fletcher Hall are both aesthetic and functional adding additional space to each of the buildings. Such is the case with the bay windows at Swanee. This bay window adds additional space to the building, as do these at Spencer Hall. Notice this unique take on the collegiate gothic bay window at McClurg Dining Hall, but it still remains true to the campus's collegiate Gothic architecture style. We see two more bay windows at Hearst Hall and Lowry Hall on the campus of Oglethorpe University. Interestingly enough, there were no bay windows on the Ford complex at Berry College. Fenials, grotesques, and gargoyles are a standard feature of collegiate Gothic architecture. We see flaches or special spires or finials atop Clara Hall on the Ford complex at Berry College, several finials on top of 
almost every building at Oglethorpe University and the buildings at University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. And even more ornate females atop multiple buildings on Swanee's campus. Of course, we see the mythical gargoyle perched atop Ford Hall, warding off any and all evil spirits. We see a number of whimsical grotesques around the University of Tennessee Chattanooga's Berry Colleges and Oglethorpe University's campus. Another element of collegiate Gothic architecture is the presence of exterior sconce light fixtures. These are present on many of the arched entrances to buildings and tunnels at each of the four campuses. A relic of previous original Gothic architecture, Scott's light fixtures serve now to metaphorically provide light into entrances and through tunnels. Window tracery, a relic of the original Gothic architecture. This was primarily seen at Berry College, Oglethorpe University, and Swanee, the University of the South campus. Originally, tracery was used to create separations in the large stained glass windows. Today, tracery pretty much serves the same purpose in collegiate Gothic architecture. We see the reinforced stone queening around windows of the buildings at University of Tennessee Chattanooga and Oglethorpe University. Originally, queening was required to support the thin glass panes. However, today, queening is simply a decorative feature of collegiate Gothic architecture. Another feature of collegiate Gothic architecture is the buttress. We see this exterior support projecting from the walls of many buildings on all four campuses. Originally designed to support the weight of the high arch walls, today it is simply a decorative feature. So, we've come to the end of another tour of Collegiate Gothic Architecture. I hope you've learned something about the features of Collegiate Gothic Architecture on the campuses of the colleges and universities visited this time. I look forward to having you again as we continue touring campuses that feature Collegiate Gothic Architecture.